Welcome to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. If you find our videos valuable, please be sure to subscribe and share the links with other citizens. Indeed. Then, of course, uh, the CCTV cameras across the province. It's an exciting project for us. Uh, why is it exciting? Uh, because every day it's like a movie. You can go onto social media and you'll see these cameras capturing images of crime, but it just goes on unabated. So why is this exciting? Because if you escape the CBD, you will not have any other camera. That's, that's the difference. You can escape our camera in the CBD. Uh, but we'll catch you everywhere. You go to Randbeck, you go to Tembisa, go to Avery Park, we've put up those cameras. We'll be in a position to track you. We might have committed the scene in the CBD, but we'll uh, arrest you in Pinoni or in Bedford View on the base of that thing. That's the exciting part of it. What is the point of 700 cameras when you have police officers like this one? Honestly, what does that change? The problem with the police is not cameras, sir. Please seek help from those who know better. It's an exciting project for us. Uh, why is it exciting? This man clearly has too much money in his hands. Imagine a man who has a bag of money and simply thinks that any problem that exists requires money to be fixed. Wife cheating gives her money. A child failing in school gives him money. A mechanic failing to fix the car gives him more money. That is the mindset of this man here. A few weeks ago, he was on our screens claiming that he's going to buy a bunch of hospitals in order to get the province ready for another ANC money pit. We've just signed an agreement that will see the Gauteng government buying back 18 private hospitals in our province. Now he's here saying he has more money pits planned for Gauteng. Police work is just like healthcare, Mr. Panyazali Sufi. At the end of the day, the work is simply about people. People must learn to do their jobs well. People must be disciplined. People must operate and monitor the surveillance equipment. People must investigate people that commit crimes and people must arrest people. People must competently hire and fire people. No matter how many helicopters you give them, no matter how many officers you give them, if there are rotten apples among your people, then you are fighting a losing battle. And let me give you a practical example. I had my phone snatched and stolen outside yeah. the SABC here. The same old modus operandi that everybody who has had their phone snatched, you know, uh, was applied. People got into a car, drove away. I managed to track my phone to a building in the Joburg CBD. The police were not interested to follow up, even though I said to them, I know where ex exactly this phone is. Went to three different police stations. Everybody refused. Each one try to pass the buck to the next police station to follow up. And you know what happened? Went there with my son um, and on a clandestine mission, and it was perhaps not the wisest thing to do, but I was very curious to see what actually goes on there. There's a man standing there, police a few feet away. He's standing there with a bag full of cell phones, stolen cell phones. The police are there, they know about it. So it's a much bigger problem than just tracking the people who are doing the stealing. I'm reluctant to call those people police. But they, they're wearing I'm SAPS very, uniforms, so saying, who are they? I'm very reluctant to call them the police. They know, they're not doing the policing work. Did you see that? He's being told of a legitimate incident that took place. He's being made aware that the police force is rotten. He chooses to ignore a big issue that is existing within the police force, a highly corrupted service. Instead, he says, I don't think they were police. Sakina's phone had a tracker, making it very easy for the police to find the phone and the thieves, to arrest them and seize all other stolen phones. 
But no, the police she reported to were not interested. Do you think that they'll be interested in looking for, catching and arresting the criminals captured by the 7,000 cameras? Do you really think so? We see that instead of addressing these facts, you just went to SABC trying to get praise for putting up 7,000 cameras. What is the point of 7,000 cameras if all the police tell their gangsters the blind spots of the cameras? Or if the police are all not monitoring the cameras? At the end of the day, the corrupt police officers are doing what is a cultural thing within the police services. The ANC, along with the majority of state-owned entities that they run, are a basket of rotten apples. The ANC is the first and biggest rotten apple that infected the government. To get rid of the rot in the government, we need to get rid of the whole ANC, including Mr. Panyaza Lisufi. Why? Here is why. In 2011, Minister of Police Becky Tele was implicated in corruption back when he was a National Police Commissioner. This was in connection to a 1.5 billion rand rental deal connected to a man named Ru Shabangu. This was for police headquarters in three different provinces. Imagine 1.5 billion rand to rent three properties. One of those properties was going to be rented for 500 million rands. These rentals were highly inflated and public protector of that time, Tulima Donzela, considered Becky Tzela's conduct as a police commissioner to be improper, unlawful and amounting to maladministration. An inquiry chaired by former judge Jake Muloi found that Becky Tzela, our current police minister, had been dishonest and was unfit for office and recommended his dismissal. So he was fired from his job as commissioner. Yet that same person is the one that President Cyril Ramaphosa appointed as the police minister. Like what the hell is going on with the ANC? President Cyril Ramaphosa is an embarrassment shim. So police minister Becky Tsele, a man who was too dishonest and too unfit to hold office as a police commissioner in 2011, is now fit to be minister of police in 2024. He wasn't fit to be an employee of SAPS, but now he is fit and honest to run SAPS. Oh, what? Lunatics! Mr. Panyaza Lisufi, please note, a fish rot from the head. It's not just Becky Tele, it's all of you in the ANC because you allowed it to happen. Panyaza Lisufi is failing to acknowledge what the interviewer is telling him, that the entire police service has a problem and that that problem is a people problem. And instead, he wants to drum on and ramble on about how much money they have thrown at the police service. And that's the part I said to the leadership of the police in our province. It's a conduct that must not be appreciated. It's a conduct that must not be tolerated. We can invest in these resources. I mean, we've given them helicopters, we've given them drones, we've given them panic buttons, we've given them a sophisticated state-of-the-art command center so that we can utilize these resources to protect county. We are investing in forensic. We're investing in motor vehicles for the police. I mean, our provincial government alone, Sakina, we've given 245 new motor vehicles to the SAPS. Cars, helicopters, panic buttons and cameras will only cost more money and they will result in the police even abusing them if you don't solve the internal problems within the police departments. Focus on changing the culture of corruption, of laziness, of not caring for the citizens. Then we can talk about everything else. He then goes on to say this. So you can't therefore, when you put all these resources, CCTVs, cameras, you are putting all these helicopters, you are putting, and the police and law enforcement agencies is just business as usual. We need to flush out those people out of the law enforcement agencies. And I would love to say, a, a, a premier, I spoke to police X, Y, Z, and they didn't do these things. And the commissioner of the police must account on those things. We can't just let go and say it's part of life, it's way of life. Uh, uh, as long as I've uh, 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 registered this thing with the insurance, the insurance will pay. Or policemen that just take statements in the police station for sake of filling the forms. It can't be. 
police must track in uh, criminals. Police must ensure if goods were stolen, those particular goods must be uh, retrieved. Police must ensure if somebody is murdered, that case must be investigated and use the latest technology to ensure that in, we investigate. So he knows that we can't just continue. Then stop this nonsense of spending on silly things and start spending on the things we need you to spend on. That is proper training, fitness, internal investigations of corrupt people. And you definitely, definitely need to go to the president and tell him to remove Becky Tele. He was corrupt back then. A case of corruption should have been opened and he should not hold any public office. What is wrong with the ANC? You will invest in thousands of cars. They will not get service repaired or maintained on time or at all or for the right price. Why? Because the people are not competent, they are lazy, they are corrupt and they are uninterested. Just a few days ago, we got news about a report to show you how lame, how stupid, how dull and how disappointing the ANC, the police and you, Banyazali Sufi, are. Take a look at this. Hundreds of SUPS members in limbo after their offices closed. The Telcom Towers building, which is the SUPS head offices in Pretoria, shut down indefinitely this week after safety hazards. The building was declared unfit for human occupation by Labour and the Union Solidarity Inspectors. It's unsafe. People don't want to work there. It has a big impact on the morale of the employees of SAPS and obviously on crime fighting. A shortage of clean drinking water, broken dirty toilets and a shortage of firefighting equipment are just some of the red flags. Broken ceilings and dirty offices, another agony. After this story broke, a lot of complaints came forward. So we definitely look at the national type of campaign um, to put pressure on government. Uh, we would have to, however, uh, get buy-in from the Department of Labor. They would have to inspect other buildings as well and determine whether they are safe. The Telcom Tower building accommodates SUPS members who provide administrative support services to operational divisions. For now, these functions will be performed from alternative premises. This building was bought for more than 650 million rand. Now that he's the minister, they had a new building which he did not move into. Why? Because he's too important, you see. So instead of moving into the head offices, this Becky Tele felt too important. What did he do? He and his deputy all waited while the rest of the SAPs occupied the building. The minister and his deputy, as well as the national commissioner, were going to get special offices. After the rest of the SAPs employees moved in, the rubbish VIP was working from home. What work do you do as a police officer working from home? The vast majority of senior government employees are doing this nonsense, by the way. The government is paying rent for offices, but these employees are working from home, where they are unreachable, by the way, where they don't respond to email sometimes. Several government departments do not answer phones, and when they do answer, the story is the person who can help you is working from home. Nine million rands in renovations to accommodate a rubbish VIP who never occupied the offices. Meanwhile, the rest of the building is not suitable for people who are coming to work. The building is a safety and health hazard for those that are not rubbish VIPs like Becky Tele. This building has now dilapidated since the SAPs took over. Imagine, instead of spending 500 million rand renting buildings from that shady deal, they finally did the right thing and bought this building for 645 million rand. All they had to do was spend a few hundred thousand to maintain it. They could have had a maintenance team on standby, a building manager or a maintenance manager, an electrician, a plumber, a bricklayer, a safety officer, etc. These people would have been attending to all the needs of the building and facilities. But hey, this is the ANC we're talking about here. Maybe later this year, the 645 million rand building is going to be abandoned. Human trafficking and drug deals will happen there maybe. Instead of being a place used for law enforcement, it will become a place for crime and then eventually a few people will die due to a fire and then it will get demolished too. Again, 
all these expenses fall on you and I as the citizens. The ANC rubbish VIPs like Biki Tele and you, Banyaza Lusufi, will keep on moving from one building to the next, buying hospitals and losing them due to mismanagement, buying cars and losing them due to lack of maintenance, buying guns and losing them to police thieves, and of course, installing 7,000 more cameras and losing them due to a lack of maintenance and vandalism. Ndateli Sufi, Rahopela, please calm down and go sit down with the rest of the VIP rubbish and find ways to have the right people for the jobs. The right police minister, the right police officers and the right support staff. Don't waste any more of our money buying this and that. Spending money on new things does not mean you're doing your job well. Calm down on spending money that's not yours, please. Please. Meanwhile, citizens, please let's get Mr. Banyanza and the rest of his crew out. We can't have the police department being run by a corrupt, incompetent, lazy man like the one we have. We can't have Mr. Banyanza spending our taxes as if there are no real issues to pay attention to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and share the video. Please subscribe. I'm Katlaro. This is Citizen Concerned. Until next time, beware of the comrades.